Hello and welcome to another session on ways with words. We will start a new chapter, we will start a new poem, uh, The Times They Are A Changing by Bob Dylan. The Times They Are A Changing is a song written by Bob Dylan and released as the title track of his 1964 album of the same name. Dylan wrote the song as a deliberate attempt to create an anthem of the change for the time and is regarded as a classic timeless work of art. It was greatly, he was greatly inspired by Irish and Scottish ballads and the universal message filled lyrics are coupled with great folk music in the background. The song makes us think of those who followed tradition and past and how they had to keep up because the times they are a changing. The song opens with a harmonica and guitar playing the melody. The first stanza perfectly sums up what the song is all about. As Dylan asks the people of the world to admit that the waters around them have grown, he means that the changes has arrived. He says that if people don't accept and embrace change, they will drown in the past. It is very interesting to note that this was written in 1964 considering the tension between the past and the present. At that time, the civil rights movement was at its peak and the anti-war sentiments in the, uh, in, the peak, in the midst of Cold War tensions were very strong. You also have allusions to or direct not allusions direct references to the uh, uh, women's liberation sexual liberation um, you have the hippie movement and so on which we shall take up and discuss the history of the hippie movement and all that the vietnamese war uh, us involvement in the Vietn vietnamese war it's uh, and the brutality that shocked the youth of U, uh, of America at that time, the brutality that U.S. Uh, po uh, uh, have or waved on, uh, that the U.S. waged on um, <coughs> the Vietnamese, the South uh, East Asia, uh, were brought in through various television channels and this uh, shocked the sentiments of the young uh, people of America. Especially it was uh, the college students that were greatly affected and it was a kind of rebellion. So you will find a lot of historical uh, uh, moments and uh, in uh, the in this song. This is actually a song okay uh, and not a poem, it is actually a song that won the Nobel Prize for Literature. So, <clears throat> Bob Dylan is trying to show that with all this call for change, those who wish to maintain the culture of the past will eventually fall because new movements are growing at a faster rate. So, this is the first stanza. In the Dylan is trying to show that with all this call for change, the people who embrace the past culture and consider it something very great and big and at the same time a rage atrocities against each other and if that is what they call culture they will eventually fall because the new movements are growing at a fast rate and we are speaking about which all new movements the uh, civil rights movements the uh, liberation this uh, the sexual liberation women's liberation, women's suffrage, hmm, the right to vote for women, all that. Okay. So, uh, so, he points out to the flaws, the errors, the mistakes of the government and urges the people to act. See, the US government was, US was becoming a superpower and all it thought of was uh, grab uh, wealth, become more powerful with its weapons to become a terror, yes, and um, to have more and more colonies. 
So, this in fact shocked the youth of the age. They even questioned what questioned the their own religion. If they he says or uh, that if they will not if if they do not act they will be drenched to the bone they will be in trouble he tells them that it it is advisable to start swimming than to sink like a stone he wants the people to discard the past culture of dominity ambition ruthlessness power racism etc and start looking fresh at the world be humane love and embrace nature care for others that's what it was all about he wants them to fight against the injustice that is happening around them if not if they don't fight if they still consider themselves very high very powerful and they don't have any feelings towards others other countries the other people and us will soon reach a terrifying end see the folk atmosphere provides a simple rhythm it was a, it was also a period of change i will be discussing all that i want you to do an assignment also on the folk music of that period the 1960s the b generation you have the beatles okay um b generation is belongs to a period of literature and beatles you have the beatles the, they this the rock music the beginning of rock music so there is pop and there is also folk rock music okay not folk music but folk rock or folk pop music or folk rock music so it was a beginning of change in art in literature in music okay it was a period of a total change and the folk atmosphere of the song the the it this is a folk pop music or a folk rock music the folk atmosphere provides a simple rhythm that dylan repeats in the second stanza you the through the har, the harmonica and the guitar and all the folk music is repeated in each stanza but as we move on as he moves on to the next stanza he shifts his attention from everybody or sorry uh, he shifts its as he moves on to the next stanza he shifts his attention though he keeps the that folk atmosphere uh, alive uh, the same atmosphere as that of the stanza 1 but when he moves to the second stanza he shifts his attention from uh, everyday people to writers to journalists he calls for those who prophesize with their pens to be very careful and that is to note to take note of the change because they are living in a time when the time uh, time are changing you never know or you can never say what can happen or what may happen and there's this phrase wheel still in spin that means there is a lot of change that's still happening dylan explains that the loser will be later to win that is they he is like telling the journalists don't be quick to judge people don't be quick to judge others they there could be a chance that the person who whom you are judging right now the loser today that they are criticizing and speaking of are not you know uh, uh they may later in life Uh, become the winner so uh, he is urging the journalist to be very careful in what they write he is urging the journalist not to be too quick in uh, coming to a judgment or a conclusion so he is asking the journalist to watch the world with sharper eyes to be more keen understand what is happening around instead of quickly judging uh, things so he's speaking about the time 1960s and that that time the change of prepared the change that is changes that is happening around or that was happening around the, i mean he's referring to the 1960s and the <coughs> age of that time so this is a universal idea that uh, that applies to journalism uh, and what and this is something that we can see today also 
right surprising events may happen all the time and the modern journalists should try their best to foresee them since once they happen time cannot be reversed so journalists must have an eye for detail eye sharper eye now the third stanza i'm just going quickly with the stanzas i'll be explaining it don't worry but i'm just just giving you a gist of the th the uh, the poem the third stanza focuses on politicians who are tasked and answerable or they are answerable to the will of the people as stillen points out many politicians senators work only for their gain they are unconcerned about the welfare of the society and when people demand change and step forward these politicians cannot do anything they cannot stand in the doorway or block up the hall meaning they cannot suppress a revolution for a change it will change a revolution is happening this stanza bring out the hardcore reality of life and politics bob dylan shows how uh the these stalling politicians these great big politicians will ultimately be the ones who lose in the end because the demand for change that is uh, in his words the raging battle outside that you see in your poem is a reference to the demand for change this change uh near the capitol building of the united states will eventually overpower even the strongest of politicians and finally we come to the last stanza or the sorry the last group of people that dylan addresses to and now this is a direct reference to the hippie movement they are the parents and in the fourth stanza he reminds the parents that children are the future since times are changing parents do not have a say in criticizing what they cannot comprehend of course hippie movement was a kind of a crazy time mm -hmm. and terrifying time but th that was happening for a reason which was above them which was totally beyond their understanding the parents understanding because they belong to the older generation they did not know or they are not able to understand as to why this movement was mo going on he tells the parents that they shouldn't attempt to send their children on the path of dusty aging old road for their lives are not paved their lives are unpaved and thus the children must forge the new road and if parents cannot help or seem uh, stuck by all this then they just they must just get out of their way instead of criticizing them and lead them to pave their future so <clears throat> parents must not try to bring them through their views they must not uh forcefully make their children blindly follow what they used to follow it's a controversial one due to the argument that parents wants always the best for their children and sometimes the best is different from that of the children though it is difficult to see where the line is drawn we could interpret it as parents must not make selfish demands idoru base meaning mathrana pashe idinathu oru bhayangara oru deep aitla artham kadakkuna hippy movement ne base idittanu adu historical aanu adu njan pinneyade paranju tharam idu kazhinjine shesham avasanam hippy movement endanu nollam endu kondana parents ithrom കുറേയൊക്കെ ടെറിഫൈഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ളതും അതെന്താ എന്ത് ചേഞ്ച് ആയിരുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതും വേൾഡ് വാസ് ഗോയിങ് ത്രൂ എ ടെറിഫൈങ് ചേഞ്ച് ഇപ്പോൾ കൊറോണ വന്നിട്ട് നമുക്കൊരു ഭയങ്കര ഒരു ഭയങ്കര ഒരു ചേഞ്ച് ആണ് പക്ഷെ ഇറ്റ് ഹെസ് ഇറ്റ് ഹെസ് എഫക്റ്റഡ് ദി യങ് ആൻഡ് ദി ഓൾഡ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് എവറി ബഡി സമോസ് സിമിലർ ടു ദാറ്റ് യു ഹാവ് ദിസ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ഇൻ ദ നയൻറ്റീൻ സിക്സ്റ്റീസ് ഓൾസോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ നയൻറ്റീൻ ട്വൻറ്റീസ് മുതൽ പിടിച്ച് ദ വേൾഡ് വാസ് ഗോയിങ് ത്രൂ എ ടെറിഫൈങ് ഫേസ് the world war the first world war the second world war the impact of the world was the battles of vietnamese war uh, the us being the superpower and uh, the per, uh, the bombardment of pearl harbor the bombardment of uh, hiroshima and nagasaki and it was like uh, humanity uh, um, uh, was uh, completely lost 
and it was a time of uh, disruption. It was a time of chaos and calamity. People lived in chaos and calamity. They were confused. And so the effect and the impact that it had on the youth was terrifying. Beliefs were uh, you know, questioned. They stopped believing in, in, the, in Christianity, the Judo uh, 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 Christian beliefs. They, they started questioning uh, the religion. They found solace in the Eastern religion, Hinduism for instance, and also Buddhism, Hinduism, spirituality. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you are looking, that is the deeper meaning, but when we come to the uh, base meaning, parents uh, must not make selfish demands. That is, parents who do not want their children to make their own lives, they are the ones who make problems. Well, me, if you look at me both as a parent and as a daughter, I too wholeheartedly agree with them. Because parents must not hinder the decision making process of their children and stand in their way of future. See, every child has a dream, aspiration and every, every time that a parent stands directly in the way of a dream, the future of the child grows less bright. Though it may uh, not be a popular belief or opinion among parents I, and perhaps I could spark controversy by saying this. but. Uh, we as parents, I am also a parent, as parents must not impose our views, our opinions, our desires on our children. I would like to quote our father's words, our director, father, father Reverend Jijodita in one of his talks. Uh, he said uh, that every child uh, born on earth comes with his own visa or passport. You parents must not try to give yours to them. You can endorse them to your passport only for a few years. After that, the government is demands that they be given a passport and a visa of their own. This is the same in real life too. They have their dreams, aspirations, understandings, their visa, their passport. Only thing we as parents must do is to ensure that they get good education and grow up to be good human beings and good citizens that can be done only when they are small. As they grow up, hmm, they must be treated as an individual. Malayalathil uru chollu ondu. Adh ende appa parnyu getu tila uru kari yaan. Thaan petta makkal thaan nola maavugil thaan innu thanne vili chidaenam. That means, when they grow up, when they are matured, when they grow up, when they have attained maturity, you should look upon them as an individual. They are no longer a small child, they are, they are small uh, child, your baby. Of course, they are always your babies, but you must also uh, understand that they have their own individuality. You must respect their individuality. Their dreams may sometimes be far-fetched or sometimes even risky, but true greatness offers or often comes from taking risks, but again at the right way, okay, the right course that is also there. So, the, the students, uh, children must not uh, consider this as yeah, a, a, a license to do anything, no, it should be for the right course. Again, this is because the times are changing. Now, let us come back to the poem. The last answer shows the universal and perpetual nature of change. Dylan notes that change of the present will soon be the past. All the things he had said earlier will soon ap apply to those we know as the, pa as the present. Innate divasam, innate inna. It becomes today becomes uh, a past tomorrow, right? 
and soon this year will become a pass. See how fast 2020 went by. It becomes a past. So, 2021 the present will soon become a past when we enter 2022. So, the past become the present will soon become the past. All the things will become the past. It is weird to think about it. Life's fast and linear movement of time, but it is true. Though you are young now, you will soon grow to be old. The thing that will keep you going is the change. And if you cannot embrace change at all stages of life, we will also sink like a stone. So, the, the message of the uh, uh, song is to embrace the change. So, Dylan poses this existential question of accepting change to everyone and everything. Look at us at this pandemic due to it our life has been defamiliarized right from this familiar setting. At first we were scared we tried our best to go against this situation and found it unacceptable and terrifying but what about it now we have accepted the change in all aspects of life right online classes from the usual offline method wearing a mask, sanitizing, work from home, being cautious and so on and so forth. We have accepted the change. So, if we did not accept the change, it would have been very difficult for us. So, Dylan too tells us to embrace change that uh, than going against it. This stanza has reference to the Bible. The first one will be the late, la, later last. Munban Mar, Pinban Mar, Mark, Marko Seridia Suvisheshap. Adhyayam Umbad Upatti Anjamata Vakim Onnaman Agan Ashikinavan Avasana Mairiku game Matulavare Seviku game Venom. Whoever wants to be first must be the last of all and servant of all. Mark chapter 9 verses 35. A Bible or a quarter than a Vedekana. Okay, so that is with the poem, all right. Uh, it is not a poem, it is a song. So, you should remember that the song it won the Nobel Prize for Literature. So, you will find that uh, a song has won uh, the Nobel Prize for the first time in 2016, that is okay. So, again, we have that for English students. You have studied it or you not studied it, you came across it for in the webinar, uh, the cultural studies where everything is now a part of literature. So, it is not literature as of, uh, as of uh, books alone, movies, art, painting, everything comes a part of, becomes a part of uh, uh, literature. So, this is the new uh, aspect of criticism, they have cultural studies. Okay, so Dylan's language. Now, if you look at Dylan's language, he has used language of common people, especially the language of black. So, this was to break that stereotype. If you listen to the song, you will understand. You must listen to. I've, I will be putting the link uh, of the song, and I want you to listen to it. The time they are a changing, hmm? a changing. Look at that. The time they are a changing. A uh, changing means changing only. Another peculiarity is the use of American English and American spellings. There is an omission of letter G in the ing form. Look at that swimming. How is it written? Swimmin, tellin, namein, ragein, fadein, etc. Right? A G is cut off. There is hardly any unfamiliar word, and the lines are short and looks as though it is stacked one over the other. But again, the, those as said in very other videos, the language is simple, the, the poem however, conveys very intense meaning. Several historical events are touched upon, the so social political issues are uh, also touched upon, several movements like you have the folk music movement, the hippie movement, the civil rights movement, the generation gap conflict. Uh, and all this is vividly brought out in the last section of the uh, poem. 
uh, and you will find references or see the great personalities like Martin Luther King Jr. His inspiring speech, I have a dream, you may have uh, heard of it, I have a dream, thrilled people and asked them to fight for their rights. The older order which protected a few people were, were, all, were all questioned. So all this were, uh, became, was an inspiration for Bob Dylan to write the poem. Now I will tell you a little bit about the hippie movement. The hippie movement was a, pro a protest against the existing social order. As a protest, the youth began to dress differently. It is concerning the youth. The hippie movement of the 1960s and the 70s was a, a counter-cultural movement that rejected the uh, mainstream American life. It originated in college campuses in the US and spread to other countries including Canada and Britain. It was a youth movement. Its history can be traced to European social movements in the um, 19th and the 20th century such as the Bohemians the influence of Eastern religion and spirituality, the B generation and the American's involvement in the Vietnam, uh, Vietnam War. The, these people, the hippies, the, they advocated the fundamental ethos uh, uh, of harmony with nature, their communal living, artistic experimentation, use of re uh, recreational drugs, etc. Now, <clears throat> the Vietnam War, now what is this, what does this have to do with Vietnam War? It has a lot to do with the Vietnam War. See on March 8, 1965, two battalions of US Marines landed on the beach of Da Vang, marking the first official engagement of American troops in the Vietnam War. Over the next several years, as US escalated its ill-fated involvement in this conflict, hundreds of thousands of Americans joined in the mass protest across the country. They were all against the US being involved in the Vietnam War. The US people, the US youth itself was against the involvement of uh, US in the Vietnam War. They were repulsed, these youth, the American youth were repulsed, they were angry, they were outraged by this terrible bloodshed taking place in Southeast Asia. The college youth began to protest against the US involvement in the war its and its brutality. Though an anti-war movement had begun in college campus at the dawn of 1960s, more and more people joined in op opposition to the war in the later half of the decade. And the reason was because the television brought images of US atrocities on Southeast Asia and the youth of America, they were repulsed by this. They, sh they, they wanted to go against uh, these dirty politics of America, their own country. On one side you have the civil rights movement, on one side you have this uh, which was against racism, uh, on another side you have the sexual liberation, on another side you have women's uh, liberation, uh, uh, women's suffrage movements. Okay, So, uh, all this uh, was one reason for the growth uh, of the hippie uh, counter uh, culture or the hippie movement. Okay. And also there was a lot of changes happening in the music uh, world, in the world of music itself. Folk music was slowly giving way to rap music, to pop music, to rock music. Okay. You can see a big change in the music uh, and culture of America. So, the hippie counterculture was a rebel against the mainstream American culture, its atrocities, its politics. The youth wanted a change in American life which had already established as superpowers and humanity was nothing in front of them. They wanted to change this older system. And more and more youth joined this movement and uh, uh, their distinctive brand of rebellion included their, you know, they, 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 they started to dress differently. It was like a rebellion, or a protest, a rebellion. 
നീണ്ട മുടിയും താടിയും കളർഫുൾ സ്റ്റൈലും ഉപയോഗിച്ചും അതേപോലെ തന്നെ ടൈ ആൻഡ് ഡൈ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ഡ്രസ്സ് ഉപയോഗിച്ച് യു ഹാവ് സീൻ ദറ്റ് സോങ് നോ ദമ്മാറു ദൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് മ്യൂസിക് ഓൾ ദോസ് വെർ എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ഹിപ്പി മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് കൾച്ചർ ദെൻ ദേ കോൾ ദംസെൽസ് ഫ്രീക്സ് ഇപ്പം നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ ഈ ഫ്രീക്ക് എന്നുള്ള വാക്കിപ്പോൾ എപ്പോഴും എല്ലാത്തിലും ഉപയോഗിക്കും ഒരു അടിച്ച് പൊളിച്ച് വരുന്ന ആളുകളെയൊക്കെ നല്ല നന്നായി ഡ്രസ്സ് ചെയ്ത് കുറച്ച് സ്റ്റൈലിഷ് ആയിട്ട് ഡ്രസ്സ് ചെയ്യുന്നവരൊക്കെ ഫ്രീക്ക് എന്ന് വിളിക്കും പക്ഷെ ആക്ച്വലി ഇതിൻ്റെ ഒരു വേറൊരു അർത്ഥം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അന്നത്തെ കാലത്ത് ഫ്രീക്സ് വെയർ ദോസ് ഹൂ ഡ്രസ്ഡ് ലൈക്ക് ദ ഹിപ്പീസ് ദ ലോങ് ഹെയർ ദി ലോങ് ബിയർഡ് ടേക്കിംഗ് ഡ്രഗ്സ് ആൻഡ് ലിവിങ് എ കെയർ ഫ്രീ ലൈഫ് and they were also called love children mm. they were they wore ripped jeans in a kiri parni ippolum ida ittu kaanarundallo ivudte kore 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 pillarum adhe pole than a western culture la kiri parna jeans bell bottom tie dyed clothing adhe pole than thalayile poo okka vechu or garland pole than poo okka vechittu then uh, this Uh, they were mostly young people white middle class men and women who felt depressed suppressed by all these changes that is happening around them and they they resented to conform to the normal standards of appearance uh, to the normal standard of employment and lifestyle they wanted a change it was like a rebellion okay seeing the bloodshed and brutality you as waged around the youth began to or youth who belonged to this movement quest in religion it affected their sentiments they explored spirituality outside the judo christian tradition they wanted to find meaning for of life the wars the all all the wars had shaken their attitude completely so they tried to find meaning in life or at least they tried to have a good time hmm? now this had a great impact on the years to come especially our youth even today this was like the drugs and the involvement of people to children in the drugs all this had uh, it's starting here they joined the political radicals and vietnam draft dodgers they liked their way of life which embraced the back to the land living free love organic farming vegetarianism holistic medicine and a lot of uh, drugs so it all began with the civil rights movement the black panthers rights the gay rights women's liberation rights hmm? anarchists and other political radicals so hippie politics was more a politics of no politics in fact they they adhered to no rules you should do your own thing you should do whatever you feel like doing that was the hippie culture but again don't think that it is a uh, it is a rebellion out of the bloom that started suddenly it has its involvement in the or it can be by it can be uh, traced back to the united states uh, united states involvement in the vietnam war they questioned the hippies these these children this youth questioned the mainstream authority as the origin of uh, all societies ill which included war they joined uh, the political radicals and they supported the civil rights movement and they opposed the vietnam war now here bob dylan is uh, supporting the hippo, hippie movement he is asking the uh, he is asking the parents to step out of their way if they do not understand what the youth is doing they it may appear sinful to them it may appear absurd to them but there is a reason as to why they are behaving like that and the reason is brought by the older generation itself and not the younger generation it is not the older it is not the younger generation who is to be blamed it is the, it is uh, because of the older generation the various rules the mainstream the rules suppressions the oppressions the uh, kind of attitude that they have towards others the old generation's attitude towards humanity itself which is responsible for the younger generation to turn away from these past traditions
they were against the atrocities. They wanted to question these atrocities. And the way of questioning was like this rebellion, a kind of rebellious nature. Okay. Uh, and in the, so this poem is actually a folk rock music, okay, which is uh, which won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Um, and Paul Dylan, through this uh, song, showed that a pop song could be both a means of social commentary and a form of self expression it can be both a poetry or poyo agam adey pole thane or protest maanu alle idilude ee pop song ilude or ee or pop song ne protest ennum vilikkam or self expression de or form ennum vilikkam self expression de form endanu poetry alle or protest and a a social commentary which is a protest and also a form of self expression which is poetry his song uh, touches upon the hippie movement of the late 1960s tied up with the vietnam war and anti vietnam war protests the civil rights movement the sexual liberation and so on uh, all these you will find in the british rock music of the day okay So that's it with uh, Bob Dylan's um, "The Times They Are Changing." So thank you and keep safe.